switching gears a little bit, um, what sort of uh, what sort of experimentation techniques have you seen to be most effective for corporate innovators? The actual tools, the tricks, the things that that people do on a daily basis to actually test these ideas. Obviously, you know, we, we, we try a bunch of different things here, but anything you've seen to be particularly effective? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When people want to adopt these techniques, there's a real emphasis on tools and um, um, like almost like kind of training wheels, like things like business model canvas, things like um, templates and, and people want like sample decks of things and, and I haven't had a lot of success leading with those things you know my feeling has been and, and the work that I've done is very much that once you teach people the principles and you get the process and the kind of like accountability in place teams are very 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 smart at coming up with really good and very and domain specific ways of um, of running the experiments, of tracking the information. So like in certain organizations that are very finance driven, that have a real like a kind of like, you know, or, or like have a, people who have a kind of consulting background, there's like people have developed these really cool like two by two matrices to like, like a, here's a classic one, um, you're brainstorming leap of faith assumptions for your project. Now in some companies, the level of rigor in people's thinking just in their everyday brainstorming will be that they come up with like five things that need to be true. You know, and like you look at someone and says, tell me your leap of faith assumptions, like well, Customers have to want to buy this product. They have to pay us at least, you know, twenty-five dollars per. Uh, has to cost us twelve dollars fifty cents to produce. And it's like very loose, you know. It's like very basic. Like the thing. Yeah. And you have some organizations where like that is not good enough. You know, if some is good, more is better. So they'll brainstorm fifty leap of faith assumptions. It's like the price of energy in two thousand twenty-nine has to be like this, and you know, uh, our ability to hire the right employees. To do, I mean, it's just like it's extremely detailed. You know, a cost of every part is specified. The cost of marketing, a customer acquisition, and, and one approach is not better than the other. But if you're in the kind of culture where people have a tendency to overdo it, then you need tools that um, allow you to prioritize. So like one of the, the techniques I, I've, I've developed with some of my clients is simple two by two matrix. You take all your leap of faith assumptions and you score them according to two criteria. One is how critical to the project is it? So if this assumption turned out to be false, how bad is it? And then how soon is it a problem? So, like, what's the time horizon? So, the project that had the price of energy in 2029, like, that's a real example. I'm not making that up. But, <laughs> you know, there's not really anything you could do about it right now. It's like it either is or isn't going to be true in the year 2029. And, like, it doesn't have any short term impact. It's really not a really much of a problem for 10 years. So, like, you know, you let it go. So, so you score all the leap of faith assumptions to see, like, what's the, which are the few, the critical few, that are both extremely urgent and extremely, uh, and would show up in a, in a tight time horizon. And that, you know, it's funny because sometimes you wind up back where you would, where the simpleton team would have wound up. It's like, well, the really obvious ones are like, will customers buy the product? Do we have a channel to reach us? You know, like very simple ones. But every once in a while, uh, you see something different. And I use that example because that tool was invented by a team themselves in a workshop that I was doing. I didn't invent it. I was teaching people the general principles, and they were in this situation. And I came in to meet with them during the workshop. The teams were having their separate individual working time. And on the whiteboard, they had this whole system worked out to prioritize the leap of assumptions and they taught me the system, the tool. You know, I didn't teach it to them and, and I've seen that now over and over again that the, the really good companies and the really good teams build their own tools and process after they really decided kind of what are the principles that they wanted to adopt and then once they've kind of gotten the hang of it then they'll sometimes go outside and add, you know, an analytics tool or an experiment tracking tool or, or business model canvas or some kind of business model template like those things can be helpful, but I, I don't I don't think they're actually as effective as training wheels. I think they're much more effective like after people have learned the skill, then they can kind of add some complexity and add some tools to that uh, to that that framework. Yeah, I think that's right. It's it's we found that you know principles over process is usually where we start. And then once people kind of get it, then they they can see how the stages might, you know, flow forward from that. 